We are only days away from major headlines. The committee hearings into Benghazi. What will we learn then? That is a significant question today. A one attorney's attempt to get clearance for a client to testify turned to a war of words all throughout the week with the State Department. Have a listen here from the briefing. Now she's been in touch with us directly yeah. to go about the normal You're procedure. She was just to say she was a lying. I'm she, saying she's making false statements so that were unfounded that we were false statements is lying, isn't it? Uh, we think that right? uh, false statements are lying, Matt. And so we had somebody who was on national television saying that we were blocking them from getting a security clearance. That's appropriate, which was not true. We think that it was uh, unfounded to go on TV and say I'm not getting a security clearance. I'm being blocked when. Uh, she hadn't picked up the phone and even called us. So that from the State Department just yesterday. Here to respond, Victoria yeah. Tunsing, representing one of the State Department employees, the person in question for that question and answer there. Good morning and welcome back here to America's Hello, Bill. I know you're offended by the whole lying charge, and I, I think the back and forth is significant in Washington. Uh, it's my sense, though, what the American people want to know is, is what your client is willing to say about what happened in Benghazi that night. And we're going to have these hearings at midweek next week. And how far is your client willing to go at that point? Well, my client will tell everything my client knows in that, that hearing. And I'm not going to talk about it at, ahead of time at, at all. And so, but I do want to address that, what Mr. Venterell did because the American people also deserve integrity from their government and they're not getting it with his State Department bill. Mr. Ventrell has been making up stuff about me all week and attacking my credibility and here's what he does. He makes up a statement and says I said it when I never said it and then he says because that statement's false she's lying and he first did this on April 30th. He lied to the press corps. He misled the press corps by doing it. He said we are not aware of any employee coming forward, any employee coming forward asking for a security clearance when he well knew he had two letters at the State Department of Chairman Darrell Issa requesting a process, a process for lawyers to be cleared. And he then pretended like I was saying that an employee had come now, forward. Now this is a spokesperson for the, for the U.S. Department of State. He's not in some back room in Washington, D.C. No, he's the he spokesperson. Has, but what you're saying is that he defined, uh, sorry, he defined employee. He did not define a member of Congress. A member of Congress. In this case, Darrell Issa, is that the distinction weeks. you're making? Yeah, he, yeah. And so he was misleading the press corps by playing the cutesy game, a straw man argument, like, oh, well, no employees come forward when he full well knew that Issa had asked, been asking for two weeks and had been ignored, not even a phone mm -hmm. call. Look. Joe, just so the people understand, because this is important, Joe and I didn't know where to go at the State Department, and neither did the House Committee, by the way, or they would have done it. Who would have thought it was the legal employment office where you get your clearances? Nobody, you wouldn't have even thought of that. And we don't have the form. The government has to send you the form. And then this guy, Mr. Ventrell, did this again yesterday and made up another statement that I'd never said and said I was lying. I want to tell you this, Bill. If Secretary Kerry has any integrity or class, he will demand that Mr. Ventel apologize to me. Have you communicated that with Secretary Kerry? I'm doing it right now. Mm. What would you expect to hear from him? I want an apology. He made up statements saying I said them, and then he said, well, those are not right statements. There you go. Mm. And you know what? Here's an, another interesting thing. May 1st, when they sent us, finally sent us the process, and said we do this as a matter of routine. Joe talked to them because I was still at Fox when they finally called and uh, Joe said well I'm here to apply for a, a clearance for us to represent our clients for, before a congressional hearing and Understood. she said Joe, Gee, Joe's that's your, unusual. Joe's your that's husband unusual. by the way just so viewers are, are clear on that. But listen yeah. I, I'm really focused on what happens next week. Okay and, I'll and, go and there you, now. You want to think about all the all the stories that have been out there in the past eight months about Benghazi? And perhaps many would argue are the stories that have not been reported since that time. But what will your client add to the wealth of information that's out there already? I'm not going to identify my client because to do that before it's but, but required we will by know, law, but which we will happen know, on Sunday. I understand, but we will know the identity by next week. Oh, yes. I, 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 my client is to be testifying next week, and my client and the other two witnesses, I believe there's three witnesses, I don't have the final word yet from Chairman Issa, but they know as a group what happened prior with all the security issues, what happened the night of 9-11, and what happened in the aftermath, including retaliation. Okay, now two specific questions. How many whistleblowers do you believe there are? 
Oh, there are more. Let me tell you. These uh, is brave it two? People, is it six? Is it ten? Is it thirty? What is it? No, Bill, you you can't do it that way. There are three people have agreed to come forward and let me tell you what's happening. We're getting phone calls at our office of people saying, you know. I wanted to come forward, but I'm afraid, and I'm going to wait and see how this hearing goes before I decide what I'm going to do. So the, the number continues to add up then. So a whistleblower right. is one thing, and I'm not here to make them any less significant, from a survivor of the attack that night. But in this case, is a whistleblower the same as a survivor from inside that city? Well, it doesn't matter. A whistleblower is actually a, a legal kind of term, meaning they get certain protections. Only and because I'm trying to figure out whether or not they were in country the night of September 11th. Well, Can you answer you'll that? You'll f I'm sure you're going to show up Wednesday and find out okay. who, All right. who they are. We'll see you, um, we'll see you Wednesday. We, we shall. And we'll speak with you and also the State Department between now and then as well and try and clear a lot of this up. Victoria Tenzing, thank you for your time out of Washington, sure. D.C. Appreciate you coming back. Here's Mark. <laughs>